Family Theater presents Scott Brady and Raymond Burr. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The First Morning, starring Scott Brady. And now, here is your host, Raymond Burr. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The First Morning, by Adela Roger St. John, starring Scott Brady as Nick. It had started very slowly, very naturally, because when you're waiting after midnight for a son or daughter who is out too late, they're never out too late all at once. At first, they're just overdue. Then, after an hour or so, when they really are late, you start making mental lectures to them until by the second hour and then the third has passed, all very slowly, very naturally. You discover you've stopped delivering mental lectures because you aren't peeved or impatient any longer. You're just scared. Maybe... Maybe he decided to spend the night with Walt. Walt? The Wilkins boy. Then why didn't he call us? Well, he might have thought we'd gone to bed. Oh, sure, sure. We always go to bed when our 15-year-old son stays out till 3 in the morning. I'm just trying to think of possibilities. I know, honey. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rocks. What? Rocks. What a great thing to collect. Couldn't be bottle caps or postage stamps. Now it's got to be rocks. Well, we encouraged him. We like him to be outdoors. Oh, be gentle. I encouraged him. Well, you were right to. Skip isn't a baby. I keep forgetting it. I just didn't want him to be mollycoddled. I know. So what starts out to be hiking in the hills turns into climbing up mountains. Skip's a good climber. Sure he's a good climber, but where is he? Three in the morning. Do you... Do you think we should call the Wilkins? They're probably as worried as we are. Well, Skip said there were two other boys driving up with them this afternoon. In what? One of those hot rods? I didn't see the car. That's probably what happened. Fool things are put together with string and solder. Well, you think maybe they... they had engine trouble on the way home? Mm, wouldn't be surprised. And that's where yours truly, Nicholas Hatch, draws the line around here. No hot rod or coal rod or anything like it. You know, Kev Skip begs himself hoarse. Oh, there he is now. I'll, I'll get it. You tell him I'm sore. Plenty sore. Hello? Get home right away. Yes, yes, Walt. Well, What? What's wrong? Just a minute, Nick. But, but didn't you look for him? Uh, 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 all right, Walt. Yes, yes, thank you. What is it? He didn't come back with them. Didn't come back? They got separated climbing down. You mean Skip's still up in the mountains? Walt and the others looked for him and hollered, but he didn't answer. Nick, he's lost up there. Now, take it easy. Maybe take he it fell. Easy. Maybe he's lying somewhere hurt. That was how it started, with a phone call. I don't remember the exact sequence of things after that. We called the police and the forest rangers, and I talked to the other boys who had been with Skip until he turned off down a side trail by himself, just to have a look. I remember there was a broadcast, too. Not just a police broadcast, but a general alarm saying that Skip was missing in the mountains and for people in those parts to be on the lookout. And I remember those things that took all of the next morning and most of the afternoon because, well, it was nearly five o'clock when the phone call came in from the forest ranger. This old man saw him down in the ravine. Oh, seven, eight o'clock this morning. But he didn't think much about it. Thought it was some, something some campers had thrown away, a bundle of clothes or something like that. Until he heard it on the radio about your boy being missing. Well, he didn't have a telephone, so he had to come all the way down here to town. Now, he's not sure, of course. It, well, it may be just that, a bundle of clothes. 
but he thought he'd better report it. A bundle of clothes. If that's what it was, then all these people standing along the edge of the ravine were wasting their time. The state troopers, the ambulance men, the group huddled around the dying fire, some of them with cameras at their knees, they'd come on a wild goose chase. Unless the bundle of clothes turned out to be my son. Hi, uh, Mr. Hatch. Get any sleep? No, no, doctor. Well, how about the missus? She's over in the car. We should be getting light before long. It will start down as soon as it does. Doctor, if... Uh, hmm? That's skip down there. Now, look, you take it easy. Uh, I mean, if... Well, if he just banged up his ankle or something like that, he, he'd get through the night all right, wouldn't he? Cold up here isn't that bad. Oh, sure. If he's just shaken up... He's a tough kid, Doc. A lot of guts. Well, won't be long now, Mr. Hatch. I, I know he must have well, taken quite a spill, but... Almost 200 feet. Oh, look, this brush and scrub oak up near the top. Of, they could break his fall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'll get back to the car, see how Catherine is. Sure. Now, I'll let you know as soon as they're ready to start down, okay? Will you do that? Well, sure. Do that. But you try to get a little rest yourself. Yeah. Honey? I'm awake, Nick. Get any sleep at all? No. When are they going down? As soon as it's light. Mm. It won't be long. I... I keep thinking how brave he is. Isn't he, Nick? You bet he is. Like when he had his tonsils out. Came out of the ether. All he said was, that was a dirty trick. Yeah. Remember the time he got his finger slammed in the car door? Sure. I wish he wasn't so skinny. It doesn't leave him much to go on. I feed him and feed him, but he never seems to get any fatter. He's, he's a tough kid, and he knows mountains. Nick, look. Huh? It's starting to get light. I went back to where the men were gathered at the head of the trail that led down along the sharp wall of the ravine. The young ranger in charge of the rescue party was having an argument with one of the newspaper photographers. I'm sorry, mister, you can't go down Look, there. Look, Sonny, one of us has got to go, and I've been elected. Well, the trail's dangerous. I have to take the dock and a trooper to handle a stretcher. I'm sorry, but you're you... are no sorrier than I am, but we can't get no pictures sitting around that fire. Well, you're not going to be happy in those shoes. Huh. I wouldn't be happy climbing mountains in no kind of shoes. Do I have to be happy? Well, well, suit yourself. Uh, Mr. Hatch. Yes? It may take us a while to get him back up here, if it's the boy, so... Well, don't get worried. But well, I'm going with you. Well, I can't tell you not to, but, well, we may have a little trouble. It, well, it's our business. Well, if I were you, I, I'd stay here. No, you wouldn't. We formed a line at the foot of the trail. The ranger first, then the trooper carrying a pack that must have been the basket stretcher, then the photographer and the doctor, and at the very end, me. At the last second, I heard Catherine... You can't come, honey. Nick, listen. They didn't even want me along. All right, but I want you to do something on your way down there. I want you to promise. Sure. I want you to pray. All right. I mean it, Nick. You used to pray. I said all right. You better get started, Mr. Hatch. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm right behind you. Please, Nick. I promise. There isn't anything else to do now. We started down along the edge of the ravine. In the first faint change from darkness, the mountains were towering shapes, a, a little greener than the olive green sky. Pray. <laughs> I'd forgotten every prayer I ever knew. Except now I lay me down to... Uh, Skip used to say that one. Every kid in America said it. And God bless Mama and Papa and Prince and all my friends and relations and make me a good boy, amen. Uh, maybe Skip had remembered it. 
Or like Skip wouldn't cry, so maybe he prayed. Not that his dad would know about a thing like that. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. <laughs> beg your pardon, Mr. Hatch? Oh, excuse me, Doctor. Just talking to myself. Oh, well, it sounded for a minute there like, well, like you were praying. Sure it did. I might as well have been saying eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> my soul to keep. Don't believe in it, huh? Sure, I believe in it. Goes on all the time, like measles or murder. Just doesn't work. I could give you an argument on that. Well, don't bother. You know, I come from a long line of prayers who never had a prayer answered in their lives. But they could always give you an argument. Well, your... Your wife seemed to think it might help. Catherine's never been inside a church in her life. Well, it's never too late to try. Now, don't kid yourself. It's a bad joke. If I should die before I wake. You know what would happen if you should die before you wake? What? You'd be dead, Doctor. That's all. The trail made a sharp bend around a spur of the hill. The grade was steeper now, and at the left was a sheer drop, a hundred and maybe a hundred and fifty feet straight down. If a boy fell down onto that rock-strewn wash, he'd get hurt. To say nothing of two nights' exposure. Pray. Ask God to take care of Skip. God, please take care of my son. I haven't asked you for anything lately, and you never came through when I did, but I'm in a spot now. So I'll try the old abracadabra once more if I can manage it. Pray, just like all the other times I prayed, you never came through. Yeah, like that time in high school when I got arrested. All right, kid. All of them. All the kid. I, I wasn't speeding, officer. Who says you were? Let's see your driver's license. Oh, it's right here, somewhere in my wallet. Pretty nice car you're driving. Yeah, it's my old man's new LaSalle. Hasn't got 500 miles on it yet. That's why I wasn't speeding. You've been drinking, kid. Uh, no, no. Let me smell your breath. Just a couple of bottles of home brew. I'm okay. You're sozzled. Come on, Sonny. I'm taking you in. I prayed to you that night, didn't I? Prayed the cop wouldn't take me to jail. Wouldn't tell my mother. All the good it did. And that old judge on the bench staring down at me the next morning. And you sure answered that prayer. For weeks I woke up seeing that old buzzard's face. Got me so scared I wouldn't even go out with the gang anymore. Every time they were after me to go on a beer bus to swipe a car, I saw that old judge. Mr. Hatch, look out! I I'm losing my balance! No, I got you. Well, what, what happened? I'm all right. They put his foot down on a tumbleweed. It looked like solid earth to me. I... Must have been dreaming. Everything all right back there? Yeah, we're okay. I just lost my balance for a minute. How much farther is it? I'm pooped. It's about 15 minutes. You want to take a rest? No. No, let's keep at it. Okay. Just look where you're going, Mr. Hatch. Boy, it's, it's going to be tough getting the stretcher back up here. It's going to be tough getting me back up here, Doc. With or without pictures. <laughs> hey, that's funny. Huh? Yeah, I was just thinking... My wife's going to be sore if I do or if I don't. His wife? What about my wife? Catherine waiting back at the head of the trail, trying to imagine what we're doing this minute and what we'll do when we find out whether that bundle of clothes is skip or not. Catherine, wishing she knew how to pray. Or maybe praying without knowing how to, how to at all. Or maybe you couldn't do that. Maybe prayer needed practice, like... Like a golf swing. Maybe you couldn't tune in just like that on what you decided was nothing at all. But I used to be tuned in, didn't I? You remember me from a way back. Not just high school, even later. Five years later. But you didn't come through that time either. She was all I wanted in the world. And you wouldn't give it to me. Hi, Nikki. I'm sorry to be late. Mm, gee, I'm starved. Here, let, let me take your coat, Pearl. Okay. Where are we going tonight? Well, thought we might take in a movie. A movie? Yeah, that one with Cooper and Dietrich's over at the Harper. Nikki, I thought you invited me out. I saw that movie three months ago downtown. Well, tell you the truth, Pearl, I'm a little low on cash tonight. You've got enough to pay for the meal, haven't you? Of course I got enough to pay for the meal, but... Gee, good grief, every time you have a date, do I have to go broke to prove I love you? 
Oh, Nikki, this, this is silly. I have two other invitations to go out tonight. One to the Blackhawk. Well, I took you to the Blackhawk two weeks ago. Well, I'm not saying you didn't. But just because I've been there once, shouldn't I go again? Of course you should go again, but... Pearl, hmm? let's get married. I I'll take you to all those places, any time you want. On what, your salary? Well, $35 a week, that's pretty good for these times. $35? We spent almost twice that much just last week. Well, so what? So how do you do it? That's so what? Compared to the other fellows I go out with, you haven't got a shirt on your back. Uh, well, I got money of my own. Mm-hmm. Go on. What do you do, clean out your old man's wallet when he isn't looking? Mm, okay, so I snitch a few bucks now and then. What of it? <laughs> you must have it pretty bad. Well, I ask you to marry me. Yeah, and, and that's very sweet. Will you, Pearl? Well, it's a big compliment, but... Please? I don't see as I can, Nikki. Yeah, I prayed about Pearl, too. <laughs> First love. Night after night, I went down on my knees, my arms stretched out across the bed, asking you to give her to me on any terms. I still hadn't learned that you didn't answer prayers. You, Doc. Yeah? Uh, come on up here, will you? Uh, sure, right with you. Now what? It uh, looks to me like an narrow spot up there on the trail, Mr. Hatch. What's he want with the doctor? I guess just to have him up front in case he run across uh, something uh, before it widens out again. The photographer was right. For the next 50 feet or so, the trail was too narrow for us to walk face forward. We had to turn sideways and move like crabs. The earth of the mountainside rubbed against our shoulders and little clouds of dust went up and danced in the light. Pray. <laughs> and I prayed pretty hard the last time I stood in a line like this, didn't I? It's a funny spot to do your praying in, a polling place. But I wanted that too. I wanted to be mayor. And later that night, waiting at home with Catherine for the returns to come in, I prayed some more. Remember? Three years ago? Are you sure you don't want me to turn on the radio, Nick? No. Those figures will drive you crazy. Besides, they're old stuff by the time they broadcast them. Mm. Want me to call headquarters again? Bill said he'd let me know if there was any change. Let's play another hand of rummy. All right. Yeah, it's your deal. Nick, I... I, I know how much you want to win this election, but... With what? Well, in a way, I almost wish you hadn't run for mayor. Well, why not? I think I'd make a pretty good one. Of course you would. It's not that. Well, then what is it? Well, people in public office have to take such a beating. I knew that when I went into this. Just part of the game. Well, maybe you knew it, Nick, but you haven't weathered it very well. I'm okay. You're not okay. I wish you could see what happens to you every time you read a critical editorial or someone makes a speech against well, you. Well, no one likes to be called names. Besides, it's just politics. They don't mean it. Then why can't you let it roll off your back? I do, I do. It's just, well, it just takes a little time, that's all. I'm new at this. You're not just new at it, Nick. You're wrong for it. Now, listen, Kathy. I've had enough of that kind of talk from the newspapers. You're, you're too thin-skinned, Nick. you you don't like to see people get hurt. I don't see what that's got to do with it. Well, that's probably Bill. You want to talk to him? No, uh, just take the figures. Hello? Oh, yes, Bill. Uh-huh. Uh, let me write him down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and that includes the ninth and the 15th wards? Oh, okay. Yes, thanks, Bill. Yes. Yes, I'll tell him. Well, how's it look? Johnson's pulled a little ahead again. Even counting the 9th and the 15th? Yes. Well, they still haven't heard from the 4th Ward, though. Well, it won't matter. We figured to lose the 4th. I know. Bill just told me. I guess that's it. Bill suggested the sooner you sent the telegram, the better. 
Telegram? To Johnson. Congratulating him. That was the last time, wasn't it? Ask for bread and get a stone. You keep books here to know the last time I'd pray for anything. <laughs> Johnson beat me by almost 20,000 votes, remember? <laughs> Maybe the town ought to thank you for not answering my prayers, since they never had a mayor like Johnson. Even I voted for him the next time. And Catherine was right. He... Well, I am too thin-skinned. Well, maybe even I ought to thank you. Not for answering prayers. You don't do much of that, but... But maybe I ought to thank you. You say something, Mr. Hatch? Say something? Yeah. Yeah, I did say something. Anything wrong? Wrong? No. No, that's just it. Nothing's wrong. Now, now take it easy. But it could have been. It could have been all wrong if he had given me what I asked for. Now, now don't get excited. No, I should thank him. I just never saw it that way. If that cop hadn't arrested me and the judge didn't scare me half to death, I'd still be hanging out with those bums. What cop is this? And Pearl. Oh, brother, wouldn't that have been a marriage? Pearl? I'd have slit her throat in a month and hung for her. Look, I know you're under a strain, Mr. Hatch. I never but... found Catherine. That'd be the worst. The only woman in the world, and I never would have found her. Your wife? Or had Skip. Look, I know how you must feel. And that mayor's job. Wouldn't I have blown that to pieces? Well, I must say I thought Johnson was the better man for the job. You were right. And, and he was right. He? All along. Every step of the way, and I never saw it. I never saw it once. Mr. Hatch! Mr. Hatch! What? What is it? We found him. Look down there. It's the boy, all right, Hatch. See? Down there on the ledge? It's... Yes. It's Skip. We'll lower you down, Doc. Here, put this rope around your waist. He's... But he's just, he's just lying down there. He isn't moving. Take it easy. But he's so still. Take it easy. Maybe he's asleep. They buckled the doctor into the harness. It looked like a parachute harness and lowered him over the side. He swung and stumbled and clutched his way down the ledge. Dust and rocks bounced below him. When he hit bottom, he got up, shook himself, and went to bend over the small figure. From the trail, it did look like a bundle of old clothes. Red jacket, blue jeans, stuffed into heavy hiking boots. One of them turned in at an angle. After a few moments, the doctor shrugged and waved at the ranger who was scrambling down a gully farther along. I guess he needs a ranger to help bring him up. I'm awful sorry, Mr. Hatch. I... I thank you. Uh, do you mind if I snap a picture? No, of course not. It's my job. What, why, why are they being so gentle? What? Well, putting him on the stretcher. They, why are they lifting him so carefully? I don't know. Well, they wouldn't do that. Well, would, would they, unless he was still alive? Uh, no, no, I, I wouldn't think but, so. Well, they wouldn't. It, it's got to be the reason. I knew Catherine was waiting at the head of the trail, but I was waiting here. I couldn't watch them bring him up. And then I had to watch. The ascent was some, well, like some nightmare, bright and terrible, then blurred and then blank. And the same as in a, a nightmare, I couldn't scream for help. When they got it up, the stretcher filled the width of the path and Skip lay on it, his face turned to the sky. The doctor had knelt down and was holding my son's wrist between his fingers. Oh, it's, it's there. The pulse, it's awful faint, awful weak, but it's there. was there, his pulse, and pulse meant life. If a man listened, a trained man, he could hear it. Maybe that was the answer to everything, even prayer. Maybe after a man got through praying to God, he ought to listen, in case God wanted to say anything to him. I looked down at Skip again. His eyes were open. Hi. Hi, Dad. What do you say to a thing like that? You don't say anything. You might interrupt. You just keep listening. And if you keep on listening long enough, 
you might hear the voice saying, this too is my beloved son. This is Raymond Burr again. Now, some months ago, Family Theater received a card from someone who didn't believe in prayer. The writer of the card claimed that he had never been given anything he had prayed for, that God had never listened to him. Of course, there are many answers to a story like that. Perhaps the writer had said only one prayer and then had given up, or perhaps he hadn't prayed for the right thing. Many of us pray for the wrong things, you know. For if it is true that the justice of God demands that we be given the things necessary to save our souls, then it is also true that God could not give us something which might cause the loss of those souls. Each week, Family Theater urges that we pray for something which, because of its very nature, is good for us. It's love. That's right, love. For that's what we mean when we speak of family unity. Love is the only force which can really unite the members of a family. So when we ask you to pray for family unity, we are suggesting that you call on the author of the family to fill your home with love, which is, after all, really the ultimate good thing. This kind of prayer cannot help but be answered. And when you pray, Pray together as a family, for the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought to you transcribed The First Morning, starring Scott Brady. Raymond Burr was your host. Others in our cast were Gene Bates, Robert Emlin, Jeffrey Silver, Jack Crucian, Paul Savage, and Julie Bennett. The script, based upon a story of Adela Rogers and John, was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Larry Chatterton expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present Lullaby of Christmas starring Roddy McDowell. Ruth Hussey will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.